Hello and welcome back. Today we're working a little bit further afield than what I'd normally go. We are heading to Newbury. So I've been recommended to this client by an existing client who I installed a charger for. Uh, we're gonna install a hypervolt there and we're gonna take some time and discuss car batteries. Okay, so we've arrived on the job uh, and I'll give you a quick run through exactly what I'm doing today. So here we have the meter box and inside that meter we have an analog meter, which is absolutely fine. That doesn't impact my installation in any way. We have a 100 amp fuse on a TNCS earthing system. Now we're not gonna put an external consumer unit on this property because the driveway is really narrow and it's also really close to the main road. So we don't want anyone tampering with that. Now, Inside the property, we have a split load fire rated consumer unit with type AC RCDs. Now with the hypervolt, it doesn't have built in type A RCD protection. So I'll be swapping out one of those double pole RCDs for a type A. Now I appreciate I've used a lot of jargon in what I've just said, and you may not understand all of that. So as I go along and we do this installation together, I'll break down that jargon and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, if we look inside this meter box, what we have is the analog meter. This is the 100 amp fuse I'm talking about. This is also called a cutout. We have, these are the meter tails here, which go to the consumer unit. And then we have a TNCS earthing system, also referred to as a PME earthing system. Now to identify this, you can see an earthing conductor coming out of the side of the cutout. If you had a TNS earthing system, you would see an earth clamp of some sort around this incoming cable here and an earth cable coming off that. And if you had a TT system, what you would see is an earth spike. Now this is normally found in sort of countryside areas. Here is the consumer unit. Now I call this a split load consumer unit. And what I mean by that is, we have the main switch here and then we have two RCDs, one at this end and one at this end. Now this RD, RCD protects these circuits here and this RCD protects these circuits here. So the board is split. So one thing I've noticed inside this consumer unit is that the live and the neutral conductor on the meter tails are not identified. So I'll identify those. Also, I can see that all the circuits inside this house are running in the cavity of the wall behind this consumer unit so i'm not going to drill in this consumer unit i'm going to drill to the side here where there's some space carefully and then gland my ev ultra cable into the side
So I'd say 99% of the installs that I do at the end, my client would then ask me, how long will it take for my car to charge up? So there's several things that we need to take into account, such as all these different manufacturers install different sized batteries. Now because of this, obviously, the bigger the battery, the longer range you're gonna have. Now these batteries are measured in a unit of kilowatts. So for example, a Nissan Leaf has a 40 kilowatt battery. It has a range, a realistic range of about 143 miles. And on a fast charger, which the Hypervolt is classified as, as it's a seven kilowatt charger, it has a charging time of around six hours. Now to give you a comparison, a Tesla Model S, which has a 75 kilowatt battery and a driving range of around 238 miles realistically. On a fast charger, for a full charge, that will take around 11 hours. So as you can see, there's a big difference between the size of the battery, the range, and how long it takes to charge. There's also three types of chargers out there. So the first charger is what we call a slow charger. Now this is a 3.7 kilowatt charge, and that will come off a three pin 13 amp socket in your house. The next charger is a fast charger. Now that varies between the range of a seven kilowatt charger up to a 22 kilowatt charger. So that's a single phase and a three phase charger. And finally we have the rapid charger, which has a range between 43 kilowatts and 150. Not all vehicles can actually charge on a rapid charger. So it depends on what socket outlet that your car has. So we have the normal type two socket and plug, which most cars have these days. And we also have what's called a CCS, which is a combined charging system. Now this is what's used for rapid charging. I'll leave a picture here so you can see the comparison between the Type 2 and the CCS socket. Your electric vehicle has what we call a maximum charging rate. The battery in your car will only be capable of charging at the maximum of this charging rate. So for example, if your car does have a maximum charging rate of seven kilowatts, if you do plug it into a 22 kilowatt charger, it will still only charge at seven kilowatts. Now with every electric vehicle charging point installation that I carry out, I have to inform the DNO, which is the Distribution Network Operator. With the DNO application, there's something which is called the Connect and Notify. Now in order to submit a Connect and Notify application, the electrical installation needs to meet certain requirements, such as the property cannot be on a loop supply. This house is not on a loop supply, and I'll leave a picture here of what a loop supply looks like. If your house is on a loop supply, you will have to contact the distribution network operator that applies to your area, inform them, and what they will do is disconnect that loop supply and pull a new feed in. Another thing that we must do is install CT clamps. Now, with the Hypervolt, two of the cores in the Cat5 I have used for the load management, and I've set the limit to 60 amps. Now what this means is that CT is gonna be monitoring all the electrical usage in the house. And if the load goes anywhere near 60 amps, the car charger will pick up on this and ramp down the car charge until you turn off some load, such as an oven. And then once it realizes this, it will ramp the car charge back up. In a lot of cases, this isn't really necessary because people charge their cars overnight and you're never gonna reach that limit, but it's still a requirement. The other cores in the Cat5 that are spare can be used for hardwiring and internet connection. Now what we have with this RCD is a sine wave 
Um, I'll put a picture of it just up here, just so you can see it clearer, which indicates that this RCD is a type AC RCD. Now, what I'm installing today is a type A RCD of the same brand. And on this one, it has the sine wave just here and again I'll put a bigger picture here just so you can see the difference and that's how you can identify the difference between an AC and a type A RCD. So what I've done is I've now swapped over my RCD and I've installed a B32 breaker for the charger and if you notice I've left a space either side of this breaker because I'm aware when these cars are on charge for a long period of time, these breakers are getting warm. So I'm just giving you a little bit of space for airflow. Okay, so that's both ends of this cable now prepared. I'm gonna get on with some dead testing and then commission the charger. So here we have the CT for the load management. That is clipped around the live incoming cable, pointing in the direction of the current flow. Fortunately, in this installation, there's room in this consumer unit to put it. Otherwise, you need to put it in the meter box. Okay, so we'll do the final run through the job as we normally do, and I'll show you what we've done. So, we have the EV Ultra cable come through the wall here. I've got some fire rated expanding foam I've just filled that hole up with into the side of the consumer unit of a 25mm stuffing land. Inside the consumer unit, I replaced the RCD for a Type A double pole RCD, and along here we have the vehicle charger breaker. And here we have the hypervolt installed. Now, I'll just quickly show the cable run. So we've come through the wall there at high level without blowing the brickwork, siliconed the hole up there. Cable runs down and supported with linear clips and into the bottom of the hypervolt. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I've got loads of good videos coming up. Hit that thumbs up button and follow me on Facebook and Instagram.